Hello everybody, this is Binton7 on my Binton Gaming channel and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot! In the last episode we beat Papu Papu and all the levels before it. Now we are moving on to chapter 2, starting with Rolling Stones. This chapter will be focused on all the levels leading up to Ripperoo, my short king. Yeah, we're back in a, it's like a Jungle Rollers level. Was that what this level's called? Or... <laughs> No, it's Rolling Stones. That's what this level is called. Jungle Rollers is level two. I think this is another level where we can't get a gem, but let me double check my notes. Hey, look at that. Nitrous Brio. Did you guys see that? Did you see that That tall? It's like the, the inverse of Hey Arnold's Arnold. He's like football head if the football is upright, which I do love that for him. Okay, now that I have, I have consulted with my notes app and actually, well, not my notes app. Oh no, a life that I can't get because I'm too slow. It's my Google Sheets app. Now that I've consulted with that, I know that this level has a blue gem path. Okay, that sucks. Which the blue gem path? I mean, I could have guessed that there was a gem path based on the fact that there's a Tana token bonus stage. But whatever, I can make as many hindsight observations as I want to. I did not mean to break that up arrow. But I mean, it's not like it matters anyway. That platform, that pillar I just jumped on top of, it did a little bouncy animation because it was gonna plummet into the darkness below. Whatever though, we're here with the bonus stage. And I do love the bonus stages in the original game because you don't have to worry about actually doing very well at them at all. This is the only game where bonus stages are like this. Every other crash game with bonus stages has boxes depend on the bonus stages. Alrighty, we are back and there we go. There's the blue gem path. If you missed it, I guess we'll ha you'll have another chance to see it because I just died. There it is right there. Tiny spinning gem. And we died anyway, so it's not like we can get the gem at this point, but it doesn't matter either way. We're at the end of the level already. That's nice. <gasps> Did I miss? I missed a nitrous brio token. Oh no! Okay, I feel like I need to replay this level though, because I, I want to show you guys the Nitrous Brio bonus stage. I remember what I did. I remember exactly what I did wrong. So this part right here, where I destroyed the TNT, which destroyed all the crates. This crate over on the back left has a Nitrous Brio token in it. Okay, we did it guys! We got all three Nitrous Brio tokens. So now we're going to the Nitrous Brio bonus round which I don't exactly recall the purpose of it in the original game because similar to the regular bonuses, getting all the boxes doesn't matter in the Nitrous Brio. I think it was just... Okay, now I understand. It's that there's way more lives to get in the Nitrous Brio bonus round. That's the difference there. It's a harder bonus level with larger rewards. But again, doesn't matter with the gem. Oh, I beat the level without dying. Great, but I missed a million boxes. 18, actually, I was rounding up. Moving on to Hog Wild, a level that's fun and iconic. However, it does have a little, ooh. Hey, Crash, what you thinking? Whoa! You, my friend, you need to retake your HR training. <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're going on a hog. We're running through the world. That's the whole thing with these levels. I think there's two more in this game after this one. But yeah, they're very hard to get the gems on because, you know, you have to, like, really anticipate where you're going to be and all this, and you know, there's a bunch of other stuff going on that you gotta anticipate. But you know me, I've been playing video games since I was 12 years old, so I know exactly. Uh, this is okay, that's a tricky part right there. Because you gotta go back and forth to get the crates. It's very easy to miss one. Oh man, but yeah, it's just, just a non stop running real fast until the end of the level. Not only do you have to get all the crates with those conditions, but you also have to do it without dying, which is insane. But I did it on my first try because I'm a pro. Moving on, we're on the final level of this island, which is the native fortress. Even though we've defeated the native leader of Papu Papu. The natives are still upset. They're still defending their land with their lives. 
And honestly, I respect it. They really should do that. It's on us for invading. All right, we're just running. <laughs> I don't know. I just went quiet like I'm replaying a level, but no, this is just another level. That's like that other one that we did, the Great Wall of Pisa or whatever the level's called. It's really just the same thing here. It's a it's a level theming that doesn't come back in future games, which I think is a bit unfortunate because it's I think it's very unique. It, but I could just think that because of the fact that it is not in a lot of games, so. Anything is unique if it only happened once. Turtle! Don't kill me like that! Oh, I got woed! Alright, what do you guys think is powering those flame platforms? Is it electricity? Is it lighter fluid technology that is causing those platforms to light up? Because I'm not seeing anyone light them up. There might be just a piece of native technology that I'm forgetting about. Either that, or they're just way more advanced than we give them credit for. I don't have anything else to say about it. This is another level where you can't get the gem on the first try because of a gem path. So dying is totally okay, fair, and warranted. Man, it is tricky though. Hopefully we keep having this trend of dying only on the levels where you can't get the gem and not dying on the gem levels. So that way we really limit how much we're doing each level at one time in one sitting. Bonus round time though. Tana, come here. Whoa, bouncing. Oh, I, I just wanted to show you guys what dying in a bonus round does. It takes you back to wherever you got the three tokens and then you have just forfeit your chance to save on this level. Because once again, you can only save from those bonus rounds in this game. It is what it is. I don't really, I don't care much at all. I would care a little bit more if it was another day, but I'm in one of those days where I'm just chilling and vibing. There is a secret right here in case you guys wanted to know. You could go forward and do all those platforming challenges or you can go behind the wall. It's a fun little thing to find and it was super cool when I was a kid. And I was, I, even though there are Wumpa Fruit back here, I thought as a kid that that was unintentional and they didn't want you to go back there. I, w I wasn't very bright. Ooh, monkey time, monkey business. Why are there monkeys on the native fortress fort? No! Well, that's a classic uh, death animation there. Everything I do is for the betterment of the audience's viewership. Oh, wow. This is getting tight, getting crazy. We got a piranha plant growing out of a piece of wood. We got through him this time and we got a life. All right, so it looks like this level is a red gem path, which is kind of cool maybe maybe i'm dead okay yeah we we have now made it to the spot where i died last time and we got another <gasps> it's another behind the wall thing but it's not something that you can go anywhere with it just gives you a life which is respectable a fun little treat for those who are paying attention i respect it naughty dog we're just jumping up we got all these free lives what the heck is up with the nitrous brio stage really difficult thing all for four lives when or six lives when this level just gives you four lives for free and now i'm going to die <laughs> oh man i i screwed up if you fall at all you gotta go and start from the bottom again because you can't spin the platforms you can't spin the platforms from above and land on them so i screwed up there we got boxes over to the right, but who cares about those things? Oh my god, a life box screwed me over! Now I gotta go all the way back down. Oh my gosh. All right, we did it. We made it to the end. And we didn't die this time. We didn't die on that final portion is what I meant, because we died quite a bit in the level itself. Welcome to island number two. Who knows what this island is called? They don't say in this game, I don't think. It might be in the instruction manual, but I don't really know. We're back to another creek level, which is very interesting. Now that I've divided the game by boss, it's fascinating to see that both chapter one and chapter two end with an upstream level. I don't know if that was deliberate or if it just so happens to be the case. 
But either way, welcome back to the Riverland. This is the final level of Ripperoo's chapter. In case you did- Oh, that scared me. I thought I had more time. This is a level where you can get a gem. And from what I know, it doesn't actually start counting your deaths until you reach a checkpoint. So you can die all you want and you don't need to reset the whole level. Crash 4 needs to take notes. This guy can't get me this time. Uh, no, what? how am I supposed to time that? Dang, I, I went from last episode dying, I think zero times. I don't think I died last episode at all. So we went from that to now we're dying on every single level multiple times each. I am a man of many talents. Oh boy, let's just get out of here. We got a life floating down a stream, making myself pee. Thinking about water inside of my knees. Uh-oh. I did not time that well. Oh, I almost just did it again. We gotta wait. And we gotta think ahead of time. Have some foresight. Oh, but I died! That, uh... I, but I don't remember if there was a checkpoint before this. If so, I'm just gonna have to do this level again, I guess. Oh, I think there was a checkpoint. Oh, well... I'll just keep on going. We'll just do this level again if we have to. Exclamation point. I feel like this is the one of the only Crash games that really, they didn't make good enough controls to really give themselves the right to make a, or put a box above a pit that you need to jump on and then turn around. Like, look at this. That's crazy. Hey, but we got another life though. I do like that. And we got Tana tokens, so maybe not every single level with Tana tokens has a gem path, unless I'm really remembering wrong. That's possible as well. Remembering wrong is a human right. I don't know how I did that. We are back to up a creek. We've got another life that we can't get now because I died. Oh, except we can get it. I thought even okay so the life boxes only retroactively become question mark boxes if you don't collect the life at all breaking the box has no bearing on that situation at all uh, we beat the level without dying or no we beat the level with dying so we did not get the gem next is ripperoo but i'm gonna go back and beat this level getting all the boxes without dying I died, so I gotta reset. Unfortunately, checkpoints are boxes, so you can't go through the level. You can't just ignore the checkpoints, is what I'm trying to say. You have to get the checkpoints, which means that you have to reset if you die. No! Goodness. Okay, we're gonna get it this time. I believe in myself, and I believe in you guys with whatever you guys are doing in your life. Ah! No, I did not have faith that I could actually make that jump. So I turned around and that's what killed me in the end. Have confidence. That's the lesson is to have confidence in everything that you do, even if it's going to suck anyway. It really does not help at all that this level is the longest level in the game, seemingly. I'm suspicious, actually. What does this exclamation box actually do? I'm gonna go back and investigate. 
Because I think I... Yes! I remembered correctly. Right in time, too. I guess that is why fate had me die the last few times I got that box. Because <laughs> I did not remember on those runs. We made it. We made it. We made it. All right. All the boxes in the level. So that really was the run where it would have counted to go backwards and investigate where that exclamation point thing was. The past few times I've broken it, I've just trusted the process. Now, next time we next <laughs> I'm talking like I'm ending the episode. Next time we're going to fight Ripperoo. Ripperoo! What even are you? A dog? Look at him. He's a he's a hopping dog. That's exactly what he is. That's why it says Roo in his name. So the way that this boss fight works is that you got these big TNT, as I'm sure you guys see. You gotta jump on them and time them in such a way to where they will blow up and hurt the man right in the nick of time. Oh, and not die. Dying is actually detrimental to your health. But yeah, he just hops around. I guess the most impactful platform to have the big TNT at is the middle one, but I did not time that well. Oh, actually I did. All right, so I guess maybe this one? No, 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 and the second time he just does this weird triangle thing. So, no! Okay, I got hurt, but that's all right. I didn't realize I had Aku Aku. Timing it perfectly. So yeah, what, I guess the, the trick really is to have a TNT that's gonna blow up in between two platforms that he's gonna jump on so that he's hanging around in a certain area for longer. Um, but maybe start blowing up the TNT about two platforms behind. And there you go, he's red. Red as a tomato, he's embarrassed he died. Even his clothes are red. All right, and that concludes Crash Bandicoot Chapter 2, Ripperoo. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think about this weird guy in the middle of the jungle.